Uh, now to welcome another David. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm uh, pleased to welcome David Yehinke to the stage. David is a third generation grain and livestock farmer from northwest Victoria. He was elected as president of the National Farmers Federation in October 2023 and after serving as terms as a director and vice president for a number of years. Please welcome David to the stage. Thank you, Peter, and thank you everybody for showing up. Because as David DC mentioned, it's when we get together and we actually stand up together that we can actually achieve results. But that only happens, that only happens when you have dedicated people who care about their industry, that want to make sure it comes from a place of strength, who wants to see it succeed. And that's why I thank you, DC, for everything you've done here. I thank you for your support at the national level. And I must say, we're not losing DC at all. He's still gonna be on the National Farmers Federation board. He's still going to hear He's still going to have your voice in Canberra, albeit in a strategic way. But nonetheless, as we are a, a national organisation, as we are here to fight for farmers, we will be here supporting the NTCA in everything it does and every step that it takes. And that's the great thing about having my role, can I just say. I'm very honoured and blessed to, to stand here in front of you today, third generation farmer, always wanted to be a farmer. That's where I come from. That's what was I was always destined to be. And thankfully, I've met a few of you in the room and I want to meet more of you because my job in this role is to tell stories. They're not fantasy. They're not made up. They're the real stories of the producer. They're the real stories of why we have policy, why we stand up to government, why we ask for things, because that is the truth. If I can demonstrate why we need a policy to change because of your need, because of your desire, because it will make the industry better. That makes my job easier. So to start with, I'd like to congratulate the NTCA on its 40th year. It has been a very strong member and a strong voice and an example to all industry how that unified voice can affect change. I'd also like to acknowledge the staff of the NTCA and all the work that it does because I know and I rely on my staff to actually make things happen. It's easy enough to travel. It's easy to, to um, know the lines and know the policy, but it's the staff that drives things. So I'd like to acknowledge the staff before we got, get going. And the last thing before I kick into the slide presentation, I'd like to highlight that um, the NFF CEO, Tony Ma. And I, we've been travelling through the NT for the last week. And it's because we want to be connected. It's because we want to get around your kitchen tables. It's because we want to hear of the layers of tape, the frustrations, the tribulations, the seasonal trials that you have, so that we are able to be a force, be able to tell your story and say it with conviction, because that is the difference between an opinion and the truth. So I thank you for your time, and I thank you for the ability to be able to do that. And that's what we're here to do. So hopefully many of you in the room have heard about this thing called the $100 billion vision of uh, plus of net farm gate profit for Australian agriculture. It's a vision that was established back in 2017-18 with uh, research done throughout the nation. And it's about not necessarily the number because it does ebb and flow. We've had some headwinds and some tailwinds. We've got five key pillars and about 65 actions that we're trying to report against every year to demonstrate the progress, to demonstrate how we're advancing in every area of agriculture to make sure that we become more sustainable, have good supply chains, have access to capital, develop our people, and most of all, be the industry of the future by having career pathways and making sure we're sustainable. And out of this, we acknowledge the fact that the pastoralists, the NT farmers, the NTCA here are the drivers of the economy in regional and rural Northern Territory. And also a lot of the policy 
the advancements that we do highlight in this plan actually are the same across the nation. When we talk about industrial relations, when we talk about challenges with water, it's in a different context, but same position. And in Canberra at the moment, which, mind you, is a place that I do have to travel to and we do spend a lot of time in, but it's not the place where the real action is. The real action for me is, once again, at these conferences, an ability to talk to you, but we need to be there. That's where the, where the politicians are. And as the NFF, we feel like we're your embassy in Canberra. We have the ability to have access to ministers and we, like, we want to amplify and support the efforts of all of our members. And as you can see, we've got a fairly full dance card, though. And in many ways, we always say we're a mile wide and an inch thin. And because of that, sometimes it's hard to do these issues alone. But we want you to know that we're strong, we're dedicated, and the policy we develop is for the betterment of all Australian agriculture. It's a challenge, but that's what we do. One of the key things when I first came into office in October last year, was launched something called the Keep Farmers Farming Campaign. It was a bold campaign, and it's the first time that the NFF's run a campaign for many years. It was about setting us up for the next federal election by highlighting five key areas that we were frustrated with. We heard farmers completely frustrated with, to demonstrate that there was policy that had been in place for numerous years that was holding back agriculture. And it was about unifying the voice and, and solidifying the key issues of what we want action with. Because in agriculture, we do sometimes like having a beer around the bar and having a bit of a admiration of the problem. We always want to go to government with a solution. We always want to make sure that we've got the ability to demonstrate that we've thought about the process and that we understand the issue and what needs to be done. And in many ways, it's taken a lot of skin to do this, but it's about being respected and showing courage about making sure that our voice is being heard. And in, in a lot of situations, we've actually been able to garner support from our members, and the impact has been impressive. When we talk about protests around water in New South Wales, when policy was going through that it was completely against what we would conceive and could demonstrate that is financially responsible, but also not building capacity, taking away from communities, both livelihoods within agriculture and its ability to function is wrong. And in many ways, we've called this anti-farming policy and we continue to see a government that has little respect for or understanding of what agriculture needs and the ability to deliver for us. So what we do see is that this is having an impact when we see politicians. Every meeting I went to for the first four to five months, we didn't bring up the campaign. The politicians did, and every colour and creed, of every party. But as we say, you're only as good as your actions. It's fantastic that we have got the ability to get into departments see ministers, but we can only judge them on their actions. And I do fear and see that coming up to the next federal election, we will be calling on um, producers across the nation to have their voice heard, to make sure that our issues become issues of the nation. Because when you talk about cost of living, when you talk about communities, we are the drivers of them. We are the fabric of Australia. We are the producers that feed and clothe people, we have to be able to tell that message. And through that, and through our roadmap, our 2030 vision of 100 billion, we have got four initiatives like I'd like to share with you today. First being exactly that, telling our story campaign. In Australia, as Australian farmers, we are proud people. We understand the land. We understand what we do. Unfortunately, we don't have the connection to the, our consumers like we used to. They don't understand the issues around production. They don't understand why and how we do what we do. But this initiative is about trying to bridge that gap, not to educate or dictate to, but to try to demonstrate and show 
so that when we are talking about the need for stunning of livestock, when we do talk about the transportation, when we talk about chemistries that we use in agriculture as well, that it's understood why, why we can't have um, fruit at a low price, high quality, and yet have it in a fancy pack or in a, um, in a production system that is deemed sustainable when the reality is we couldn't produce food like that. So it's about telling the story of how we produce our food. And it's also highlights to us through this whole project that Australian agriculture as farmers, we do have a lot of trust with community. We actually are a trusted profession. It's levering off of that. It's making sure that we can put it in a frame that they can consume it easily and that they understand when they're having breakfast, when they're going to the retail checkout, that their choice is powerful. By picking Australian, you're actually supporting a whole network. The second one I'd like to mention is the Australian Agriculture Sustainability Framework. Now, I apologize that this is a busy slide, but the reality is there's a lot happening in the sustainability space. For us, it's not being on the plate, it's actually being able to dictate and be a part of the conversation of sustainability. Now, for us, it is a relationship with government and industry. It is demonstrating that we can work together on many issues, but we have to be able to not only talk the walk, but actually demonstrate what we do. And particularly when we are trying to extract high value markets, when we are trying to make sure that we've got um, a responsible attitude to sustainability, that we can demonstrate it. The good news is agriculture, we do most of it already. It's just how we express it and talk about it in language that it can be useful in both government speak, but also trade speak. So all we're wanting to do a highlight here today is to let you know that the framework is there, but in many ways you're already doing what we're asking. The third initiative that I'd like to highlight is the regional tech hub. We understand that uh, connectivity is a huge issue for many parts of Australia. This is an opportunity to contact a um, entity that is free of charge that you can ring up and tell your location to and they'll give you the best advice and best options that they know to help you be connected for any issues that you have. And it is once again another partnership and demonstration that as the NFF, we do work with government and we can get outcomes. So we are very thankful to have this. And we just ask you, if you do have issues with connectivity, this is a free service that we've partnered with to, to be able to deliver. And we believe it has made real impact across the nation. And the final one, and one that even DC has been a part of, is the Ag Career Start program. It's essentially providing anybody who's young, who's interested in agriculture to have a gap year on farm. And it's about having that support network around that person when they're on, on that placement. By the end of this year, we would have had over 300 students go through this program, 300 young aspiring adults go through this program. And they are the voice of the next generation of agriculture. They will become our ambassadors into the cities. Not all of these, um, and a lot of these people are from metro areas, not many of them are from rural and regional, but they have an interest in agriculture and didn't know how to get a start. And this program has been very beneficial to try to bridge that gap. And it's one of the things that we've been very proud of to get people into those farming situations, give them a career, well, opportunity to have a career, but then for them to speak up on our behalf. So it's been a fantastic program in that sense. So I would like to close out but, uh, by saying, first of all, as David mentioned, as DC mentioned in his speech, that we are quite aware and very focused on the saga around the live cattle class action. It's a very clear message that we've said it once and we're here to say it again. It's time for the government to pay up. We understand the frustration that you've gone through. We can see the time, the effort that's gone into this campaign. And as the NFF and as a true partnership, we're here to both amplify and stand by the people who've brought the class action together, 
and make sure that we get this issue resolved. Because as DC once again pointed out, the time frames, the waste, the absolute waste of having to employ lawyers to go through this process when the right thing to do as a responsible litigant and a, um, in a class action that was deemed easily and um, overwhelmingly irresponsible is to pay up. So we are here supportive of all the actions there. We understand and um, want to work with the, the three main advisors and which um, DC once again is a part of. We absolutely in, uh, encourage the conviction of everybody who stood up and we want to let you know that we are here to fight for you and we'll make sure that the outcome comes and we will make sure that your voice is heard. So to finish with, the very simple message is we've seen many places in the Territory and there's still a lot more to see and we want to come back here and work with you to understand that opportunity. We want both state and federal government to understand the potential that is up here and by investment, by good strategy and by making sure that they come and work with you, we can achieve a better outcome for every producer here in the Territory and also build its economic wealth. Thank you very much and I look forward to meeting the rest of you at the breaks. Thank you.